Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Golden Astrologer Podcast. I'm Deb McBride, and I am broadcasting from lovely Escazú, Costa Rica, on Monday, February 14th, 2022. Yes, I normally do this on Sunday nights, but uh, this week I was not available, so I chose to do it now. Anyway, the moon is in Leo, and it is headed towards that full moon that we are having this week, and it's already bright in the sky, and it's already very lovely, and this is the full moon that accompanies the new moon that started Chinese New Year or the Lunar New Year. And it's interesting because, you know, Chinese New Year goes on for two weeks. So when they start it, um, it, you know, it's, it starts at the first new moon after the sun enters Aquarius. And now this is the second lunation after the sun entered Aquarius with it being the full moon. And really what happens is they uh, start it at the new moon and they finish it two weeks later, which is always inevitably the full moon. So I would imagine right about now Chinese New Year is finishing up. And the full moon is not going to happen until Wednesday at 11.56 a.m., okay? So it's 11.56 a.m. in Eastern time, okay? So in this region of the world and in the region of the world, wherever you are, you have to do the math. And 11.56 a.m. at noon, so you're thinking, I don't see a full moon at noon, but someplace in the world it's not noon, and they are seeing the full moon. Um, but that is when it's at its exactitude of being full on Wednesday the 16th. And this is an interesting full moon. It is at 27 degrees of Leo. That means the sun is at 27 degrees of Aquarius, which means we're almost finished with Aquarius. And, you know, there's only 30 degrees in a sign. And so we have another few days before the sun finishes its tour of duty in Aquarius for the year. And so what's interesting about this is that the um, nodes... Uh, the North Node and the South Node, which changed signs back in January, are now at 27 degrees of fixed. Uh, the North Node's at 27 degrees of Taurus, and the South Node is at 27 degrees of Scorpio. Now, the nodes are involved in eclipses for um, the Moon and the Sun when they get together. And this is not an eclipse. We won't have an eclipse till April 30th. Um, and this is a sort of a halfway point because what they're doing is the sun and the moon are opposite and the nodes are, are square them, meaning there's a big crisscross in the sky. And so this is a very uh, interesting dynamic, meaning we're, we're at some turning point of sorts and that the, the new moon, the, the full moon is, you know, in almost exact contact to the nodes. So there's something very interesting going on right now, and it could have something to do with things that are uh, in those fixed signs in your house, in your in your houses. So wherever you have Leo, wherever you have, you have Aquarius in your chart, if you know that, um, remember the moon is going to be at late Leo, and so those houses are going to light up a little bit. And so what does that do for you? Um, it may make you aware of something. Lunations often make us aware of something. Maybe something you want to release from your life because it's a full moon. Um, and so think about the things that you'd like to release from your life and how they might be able to give you some space or some uh, space in your head maybe. All you need to do is release some thoughts perhaps. But it's Leo. So there's a lot of creative energy associated with this. And perhaps um, you need to let go of a creative project. Maybe a project isn't creative enough for you. Maybe you need to release something that could be uh, giving space for your creativity. So think about that. So the full moon is Wednesday. The moon is already in Leo. And when the moon um, is full right after that, it's going to go void on Wednesday. So at 11.56 a.m., it will um, remain void for a few hours before it goes into the sign of Virgo that afternoon at 3.42 p.m. on Wednesday. And so when we are um, looking at, you know, the full moon and then it goes void, that's the last aspect it makes before it goes void. And so we consider the energy of the void and what that energy, you know, we're not doing anything in a void that's important or necessarily um, 
necessarily like, you know, you're not taking new action. Usually you're going about your day. So it, whenever there's a dynamic like this full moon and then the moon goes void, we have some time to process the full moon. We have time to look at it, time to be with it, time to explore its energy, how we're feeling. And I think that's a good thing. There's like a few extra hours afterwards to just sort of process that. And so that's sort of what Wednesday is going to be about. In the meantime, today, Monday, Valentine's Day, um, the uh, planet Mercury goes back into Aquarius. And that's going to happen at 4.54 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, that's a very interesting thing because, you know, Mercury went retrograde. If you remember, it went direct about a week and a half ago. And it really, um, it's, it's had gone into Aquarius. And then it went backwards into Capricorn. And now it's going to go back into Aquarius again. And so that's interesting because... Mercury is what we call still really in its shadow. And if I've mentioned the shadow before, I haven't mentioned it in a while, and it's a good day to talk about the shadow. Because Mercury, when it went retrograde on the um, 14th of January, it was already at 10 degrees of Aquarius. And so until it reaches 10 degrees Aquarius again, it's not going to be out of that shadow phase, that shadow section of the zodiac, because it visited that, va that area of the zodiac, and then it moves on to the area that it did not explore yet. Now, Mercury will be out of its shadow sometime between the 24th and the 25th of February. So that's good. That's, that's not so far away. And um, Mercury is a very fast moving planet. So even though, you know, the retrograde happened and the retrograde was something that, um, you know, people don't look forward to generally speaking, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it's still kind of hanging in the air until sort of the 24th, 25th. And we really need to sort of remember that when we're dealing with our stuff like, like, I bought new software last week, astrology software, and I was like, wait a minute, it doesn't do this, it doesn't do that. No, it's particularly good. It is very good. But I'm trying to shift over, you know, systems from, because I've ha I have a Mac and I'm trying to get off the parallels that, that house my astrology software. And if I can use a Macintosh-based astrology software, well, then that's very helpful to me, um, as opposed to having this parallels drive that's sitting um, and taking up a lot of space on my computer. So these are very technical things. It's like Mercury in Aquarius is very technical, even though it was in Capricorn when I bought this. But it was still not, it was, I waited till Mercury was direct to buy the software. But I, and I don't know if I would have ever realized it until I bought it, that there were a couple of features that I needed from my old software that it doesn't do in its new software. So what can you do? Um, it's going to take a transition period anyway from the old to the new. So I'm, I, I've been communicating with the company and they're very nice and they're very helpful. And I just said, you know, I'm, um, it doesn't have this and it doesn't do that. And so I'm still using the old one, obviously, because it does take a little while to transition and, and there's charts and things that I have my old software into, into the new one. So this is what you do when Mercury is not out of its shadow yet. <laughs> And so it still, I was like, ah, oh, it feels like Mercury's still in retrograde. And that's what I was thinking to myself as I did this. I was, I was looking at this going, oh, no, it doesn't do that. That's a typical Mercury retrograde thing. That's why I tell people, don't buy new software. Don't get a new computer during the retrograde because what happens? You find out that it's got, like, less than what you thought or it's got something different or they do things differently than what you thought. And now you have to adjust the way you do things because your software doesn't work that way, you know. So it's it's complicated. And, you know, sometimes that happens even when there are no retrogrades. So <laughs> we have to be very careful in our dealings with these things. So Mercury Mercury's not out of its shadow yet until like the 24th or so. So that's fine. It's still moving relatively slowly because it's just entering Aquarius, you know, t later today. And it's, you know, it's been direct. It went direct in late... Capricorn. It's not meeting with Pluto again. 
it's not doing that. It met with Pluto the other day, and that was Friday, and that was, I think, a little, a little bit of a stickler energy. You know, I still felt that, um, that energy from Mercury to Pluto, and it wasn't horrible, but it was just like, eh, you know, it was kind of, it was very Capricorn. It was very somber, and so there was a lot of somber energy last week. So there was that, and then um, this week we have the first conjunction of Venus and Mars in exactitude, and that is 9.29 a.m. on Wednesday, the day of the full moon. So it's actually, you know, not, not long before the full moon, it's a couple hours before the full moon. So it's Venus and Mars conjunct at 9.29 a.m. in Capricorn, and they'll do that, um, you know, they're not far, far into Capricorn yet. Um, but the thing that's exciting about this is this is the first conjunction of the two of them. And, you know, here we are at Valentine's Day. And, you know, they are very, very close. I mean, they were, you know, Venus has moved ahead finally. She's at 15. And Mars is at, like, just is about just about 15. And she's a little further into 15. But they're going to do this on Wednesday. And they'll both be at 16. And it's going to be very, very close. Now, it doesn't matter. They are already conjunct. They've been conjunct. But this is an exact moment. And so let's talk about these guys for a moment because this is very important and unusual. Now, as far as the energy goes, Venus is slow. And she's not doing what she normally does. Um, she was slow. She turned around after Capricorn. And she is... Uh, moving closer to Mars. Mars is generally the slower moving planet. How do we, um, uh, you know, look at Venus and Mars and say, well, why is Venus moving so slowly and why is she catching up to Mars? Because she's still slow from her retrograde. And I have to tell you this, Venus is still in her shadow. So Mercury's still in its shadow. But Venus, even though it's been direct for a couple weeks, it's still in its shadow. And this is really, really important because there's the after retrograde shadow period of Venus. And that's what we've been in with Mercury for the last week and a half. But Venus is really, really, really um, still messing around with the retrograde phase. And I can feel that. And I don't know if you can feel that, but one of the things that's I realized the other day, and it's like the way I had an epiphany with Mercury. They're still in their shadow. So Venus in its shadow says, you know, I'm still not done with what I was working on during um, my retrograde, which was from December 16th to January 29th, and, or December 19th, pardon me, till December, till January 29th. And she's bringing up the issues that may have come up during the retrograde. And she's still having us examine our relationships, albeit from a new light. So we're not looking at things from the retrograde perspective. We're looking at things, well, Venus is direct now. And what do we have to say about our relationships and our finances and our, and our dynamic while Venus is still in this shadow. And she's going to be in the shadow until she reaches the late degrees of Capricorn. You know, she went retrograde at 26. So I would say around March 3rd or so, that's when she's going to get out of her shadow. So we still have a little while. And Venus is something where we have to Look at how we're our dealings with people, looking at our dealings with um, our finances and looking at our life and recognizing what we learned during the retrograde. What did you learn during that retrograde from December 19th to January 29th? What did you do and what gave you um, some perspective in a different light than, than what you are typically experiencing in your days. Venus is a morning star now. She's, she's up in the morning. She is a lighter, brighter sort of, um, you know, morning. It's, it's different than when she's a night star. She's like a little more seductive at night. She's a little more, you know, more of a good girl during the, the morning. <laughs> 
she's up early. Um, so one of the things that's so important about all of this is that we are still in her shadow. We're still in her shadow period. And I can feel that for sure. I feel myself reviewing things. I feel myself refining things. I feel myself uh, making decisions about stuff. It's not the things you would have done during the retrograde. You might not make a decision about your finances, for example, a big decision about your finances during the retrograde. You might not make a decision about your friendships during the retrograde, but you became aware of those situations during the retrograde. And so when it's direct and it's in the shadow, you're saying, you know what, maybe I need to take care of this. Or maybe I need to, uh, you know, sit on this and, and meditate on this for a little while. Very important. Um, and it's important to realize it. And I'm not saying don't go out with anyone new right now. Like say, for example, remember I say, don't start new relationships during Venus retrograde. Um, it may be that since Venus went direct, you are sort of entertaining the idea of a new relationship. Um, and it could be that your um, new relationship has the overtones and the undertones of Venus retrograde. And it's got some stuff, you have some stuff to work out in the beginning of the new relationship. Um, I think it's important to pay attention to those those energies. It's subtle. Remember that. It's not something that is completely like immediately like available and you're saying, okay, I, it hit me over the head. It's still, it's very subtle and it will probably be very subtle for a little while. Now, when Venus makes a conjunction with Mars on Wednesday, they are already in conjunction, but I, but that's like a marker in time. This is there's going to be a few conjunctions, and so this is a, this is a very rare and and lovely thing. You know, the last conjunction was July. They don't usually conjunct this this often. So, this is the fact they're traveling so close together. Um, last week, I thought it felt like Mars was being pushy. And Mars is pushy. Mars is a pushy planet. <laughs> it's the nature of pushiness, <laughs> especially when it's in Capricorn. It likes to be in Capricorn. So it's in that Capricornian um, accelerated, I am I need to get something accomplished here situation. And they are going to travel through Capricorn the rest of the month and into March. So one of the things that's, um, important about their togetherness is that you don't feel like you're being pushed or bullied into anything that is not right for you right now, or you are starting to do something that you probably shouldn't take initiative on right now. Venus is soft. Venus, even though she's in Capricorn and she may be a little more serious, she's still Venus. And pay attention to the Venus energy. Pay attention to the fact that Venus is the softer of the two. And she needs, you know, she's just been retrograde. So she's just come out of the underworld and is starting to get used to life again. And here's Mars going, hey, 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 you know, what are we doing? We got to get, we got to get on this. We got to move this. We got to do this. And, and she's saying, wait a minute, I'm, I'm still waking up, you know, I'm still waking up. I haven't awakened yet and I need to be um, you know taking my time and gracefully this is a Venus word gracefully gracefully entering my my light you know gracefully embracing light now and don't push me don't push me and so it's really a, a, a very hard um, balance between these two energies um, I think I think it's navigating these two is an interesting thing. It, when they normally get together, they're to get together for like a day or two, and we feel it, and we're like a little more inspired to to do something, or you know, Mars Mars is like a vitamin shot. Mars comes in and like gives you that jolt of vitamins, and you're like, yeah, I'm ready to start my day. And Venus is saying, I need coffee first, <laughs> and you're not going to provide it to me. I'm going to just sit here and have maybe. Maybe a cup of herbal tea first as I wake up. <laughs> and then I'll have coffee and then we'll, we'll get into what needs to be done. And she's, um, 
she's really, you know, moving gently forward. So if you feel this dynamic between push and pull, if you feel this dynamic between gently moving forward and gently pausing and having a moment to yourself and thinking about things, and then Mars comes in and says, you got to do this now. You got to do this now. What, what are we doing? What, what is this? No, no, no. No more time to waste. And Venus says, no, I, I can't do that. You have to be um, balancing that. The, and, you know, there's, you know, I've talked about divine feminine, divine masculine, divine, um, you know, divine energies, and then also the energies of um you know, the wounded masculine, the wounded feminine. Um, it's okay to take action when you have a sense of, you know, understanding it from an inner perspective, in your gut, from your, your gut, from your soul, from spirit, from your being. You always check in with spirit. You always check in with your gut when you're doing that. And this is something that's very important especially in astrology, you know, this is, and this gets off on a little bit of a tangent, you know, so Venus and Mars, you need to balance them. You need to balance the masculine and the feminine. You need to acknowledge what part of you is masculine, what part of you is feminine. We all have both. Um, we did an exercise with my coach a few weeks ago. She said, okay, pay attention to yourself during the day. Pay attention to how much of you is, like, at any given moment, masculine or feminine. Maybe you're in a tirade and you're 80% Mars, you're 80% masculine. And <clears throat> you're not in the Venusian area. You're sort of, ah, maybe I need to be in the, in the more feminine right now. And that would be feeling really good, you know? And... You need to start a step back, listen to your gut. And, and masculine energy does that too. Like, is it time to take action? Is it not time to take action? What a relief. I don't have to, like, kill myself to take action right now. Listen to the universe. Um, where I was going to say we go off into a tangent, um, one of the things that's important and has come to my attention in the last couple months is, you know, the whole energy of spirit behind astrology you know it is analytical absolutely we do need to know that math and numbers and and be aware of those things and but we need to tune in to how that's going to react and sometimes we don't always get it right sometimes we're like well i thought this venus mars would be more um sedate not with mars around not necessarily or oh i didn't realize this mercury was going to be this difficult well yeah i got involved with pluto a bit so yeah um it's one of those things where we have, you know, I tune into what I'm feeling. Like, I'm coming here and I'm reporting back to you. Guess what? Last week, I felt that Mars was pushing Venus around. And we can't do that. We can't have that. So one of the things that's important is to listen to your gut, your instincts, your intuition, while you are um, in this process. And this is the process of Venus still in her shadow. Mercury still in her shadow. And this is why it's important to listen right now to yourself. Because if you don't, you're going to have this experience of like being pushed and like, why did I do that? I'm not ready to do that. And, um, or, you know what? I'm ready to do this and I've got to get my act together to do this. So it, there's where is the balance of masculine and feminine? And where is the balance of spirit and intellect? Where are you maybe spending too much time in your head or in the shoulds, which is not a word that we want to use very often, but the shoulds. <laughs> um, when we look at astrology, we have to come from a place of spirit. And um, so I'm going to go off on a little tangent. A, a couple months ago, my neighbors here who were in their 30s, they're an engaged couple, they're very sweet, and they're like, hey, we saw this on YouTube about astrology. Will you, will you watch this with us for a minute? I'm like, sure. So they put it on their big screen TV, and I'm looking at this, and it's an astrology video by an astrologer who shall remain nameless, and um, I don't generally watch a lot of astrology videos on YouTube occasionally, but most of the time I'm, I'm doing, looking at other stuff on YouTube, um, like 
Joe Dispenza. Um, <laughs> but, but astrology, not so much. Um, because I trust my instinct, because I trust my instincts about astrology, and I don't need to go looking for answers from another astrologer. Um, and I know my astrology very well. But regardless, they show they don't know, they're not astrologers, so they're showing me this astrology video full of disasters. And, fi and there's like, there's video of smoke, and there's all sorts of like fires and bombings and this and that. And it was all very, very intense and violent. And I'm like, whoa, what's this? And they're showing this to me. And it was a short video. And they're t this was a prediction. And, you know, I looked at this and I said to them, I don't think you have to worry about this because I really don't feel that this stuff is going to happen. And I know this can be very upsetting, but you've got to trust your instincts. And I don't feel that this is going to happen. And I really feel like, you know, this is, I said, I don't, love when, you know, what other astrologers do is their business. But I think it's important for the lay person who doesn't know astrology to see if this sits right with your own instincts. Because um, some astrologers, not all, some astrologers want to go into what my teacher called shock and awe. And, you know, and maybe it's, Maybe it's the power they feel from doing astrology. Maybe it's their way of like getting someone's attention so that they come to them. I'm not quite sure why people do this. Yes, my teacher used to say predictions are expected of us. I don't do a whole lot of predictive work. I talk about the psychology and the moment and the experience of what um, we've been, ex you know, the experience of what we've been feeling and how we are to go forward with that. Um, I look for it in the, in the realms of nature and see what nature is telling me relative to my astrology. And so, um, so prediction and scary predictions are not on my table. You know, I don't go into scary predictions. I might say, hey, this looks revolutionary. Yeah, this could be, there's some things that, you know, we're talking about Pluto at 27 Capricorn. Yeah, that was revolutionary at one time. What is it going to bring this time? Is it going to be revolutionary again? There's a big change coming. Um, but I assured them it was going to be fine. And then they came back to me a couple weeks ago and they said, and none of that happened. <laughs> I said, no, of course it didn't happen. I told you it probably wouldn't. I don't know how, I, I would feel horrible as an astrologer if I predicted like this doom and then nothing happened <laughs> and the birds are chirping and the butterflies are flying and there's, there's no doom. <laughs> Internally, somebody might feel doom and gloom, but that might be them <laughs> um, somewhere in the world. But I thought, no, of course it didn't happen. And you have to be careful when you're choosing who you're listening to and what you're watching. And it can be, you know, there's a lot of scary stuff out there. People want to predict and say scary things, but stay with your instincts and instincts are very important as opposed to bad news. You know, you can find bad news anywhere. You just need to open the paper and get bad news. <laughs> you don't need an astrologer to give you bad news. <laughs> so it's important to trust yourself in all of this. If this doesn't feel right to you, if it doesn't feel, um, if it doesn't feel like something that resonates and we have to pay attention to those things. So speaking of resonance, Jupiter on Thursday is going to make a lovely sextile to Uranus. And that is lots of energy. That's positive energy. That's optimistic energy. That's shifting energy. And Jupiter loves abundance. But Jupiter, remember Jupiter expands. And so sometimes we feel like we're expanding and this is the day after the full moon. So we're still in the full moon, full moon energy. But Jupiter wants to expand, and it's like, wait, I'm not ready for expansion. Again, I haven't had my coffee yet. <laughs> I, I'm not ready to expand, and Jupiter expands, and we want to stay right where we are. So Jupiter and Uranus are about expansion and movement and forwardness and thinking of the future and like, yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's make this project. Whoa. <laughs> so it's a sextile. It's not a square. It's, you know, it was more squared when Jupiter was in Aquarius and Uranus was in Taurus. Now Jupiter's in Pisces and it's all like groovy and, and they make this lovely relationship to one another. And um, it's very, very um, opening. It's an opening. So that's a good thing. So this is an opening energy. Expect to feel that. They're, they're not small planets. This isn't like Moon and Mercury sextiling, which they do all the time. Um, 
this is Jupiter and Uranus, and they don't do this very often. So think about what you want to expand. Where do you want to open the door to something in your life? And how does that feel? What does it feel like? Always check in with your feelings, always. And on Friday, the sun enters Pisces. So then we'll have you know, another planet in Pisces and Jupiter and the sun will be in Pisces together. And that's uh, generally a lovely time. And it's a time for really deep intuitive work. It's a time for empathy. It's a time for connecting to spirit for sure. So, and if you pray or if you speak to spirit at all, this is a wonderful time and spirit's listening. Spirit's always listening. But when Jupiter and the sun are in Pisces, you can guarantee spirits hearing your, your prayers. So that's, that's a lovely thing. Um, and the rest of the time, Saturday, the moon is in Libra. So let's look at the voids. The void is going to happen, like I said, on Wednesday, and then the moon will go into Virgo Wednesday afternoon, 3.42 p.m., like I mentioned, uh, Eastern time. And then it's going to go into void trining Pluto, 6.20 p.m. on Friday. So after the sun is in Pisces, later that day, moon will trine Pluto. And that's good. That's a good aspect. That's a flowing aspect. And, and then it will go void. So it will enter Libra at a little before 11 that night. This is all Eastern time, 10.51 p.m. So it'll be void Friday evening. Go to the movies. Go out with friends, have a good time, go to a party, just, but it's in Virgo, so you may not want to go out and, like, be partying. You might want to just, you want to, might want to watch a documentary or something. <laughs> go to the movies, go have dinner somewhere, go enjoy yourself. It's void. There's no work to be done Friday night, especially. Weekends, no. Um, take it, rest. The void moon indicates a time of rest. Even if it's, you know, you're saying, but Deb, the moon is going void at 3.42 p.m. Uh, yeah, on Wednesday, yeah. But it doesn't mean you have to, like, don't try to blow it out of the water. Just get some rest. Take breaks in your work. Go for a walk. Do something you need to do for work, obviously, if you still need to work. But also take that time and for yourself. Take some time for yourself. Void moons are about rest. Um, and it doesn't go void again until like late, late Sunday into Monday. It's really 12.02 a.m. Eastern time, Monday morning, and the moon will be in Libra um, from late Friday night through the weekend. So that's a time for relationships. Um, and, you know, Venus is going to come out of that shadow in early March, and she will make a conjunction with Mars and Pluto, and that is a very important ending to this cycle. It's going to be very good. So on that note, that is it for the week. Thank you for your patience in putting up this podcast and have a beautiful week. Um, enjoy your Valentine's Day, whatever you're doing. If you're not doing something with a partner, do something for yourself. Self-love is the order of the day. And so make sure you get some of that in and buy yourself some chocolate. <laughs> um, I'm available for sessions, uh, the goldenastrologer.com book online, and I am available on Instagram, if you're interested, if you are on Instagram, it is the Golden Astrologer on uh, Twitter. I'm at Deb Astrology, and um, I am also available for uh, Fifth Dimension Reiki sessions as well. So uh, write to me, info at goldenastrologer.com, and let me know if you have any questions about anything. And um, thank you for listening, and gratitude to all. Have a beautiful week.